Hey everybody, today I want to tell you the story of John and Grace. Now John, he's a 61 year old man from the US and Grace is a 35 year old single mom here in the Philippines. And this is a story how it's better to have a bird in the hand than two in the bush. So in the story, John, he met a girl on TikTok. He saw this girl, Grace, on TikTok. She, she does the dances, you know, at home and, you know, singing songs and everything that people do on TikTok. And he really liked this girl and he reached out to contact her. He became a, a follower, became a friend, uh, started emailing her and starting to enjoy uh, conversating with her through messenger, through emails, and through video chats. He was uh, really getting into talking to her. He was very excited every day when he came home from work. Uh, in the evening, he could sit down and have a video chat with her and enjoy his time with her. And after a few weeks, uh, he really started liking her a lot. And he decided, you know what, Grace, he told her, Grace, I'm gonna come and move to the Philippines. At this point, he's been talking to her He's really, prior to this, never had any interest in coming to the Philippines. He did have an interest in trying to get a Filipina to come and stay with him in the U.S. But after watching YouTube and, you know, talking to me and other people, he determined that it's too costly, too hard to do, that he was just going to retire and go to the Philippines and enjoy uh, his time with her. When he met her, it was August of 2022. In October 2022 is when he decided to go ahead and file for Social Security, get ready to come uh, to the Philippines and start selling his belongings, start downsizing uh, everything and putting some money in the bank. And he's talking to Grace every day. He's talking to Grace, he's messaging her at work, and when he gets home from work and in the car driving home, he video chats with her. They're getting along really well. And she, like I said, she's 35 and a single mom. She's starting to really like him. And for many different reasons, she's gonna like him. Now, John starts sending her money and John starts uh, to better her lifestyle. He's sending her, you know, a couple thousand dollars every month, USD every month. She has some bills to pay. She has some loans that she has. Um, she needs to improve her life style, where she's living and everything. So he's really worried about her. He cares a lot about her and he starts sending her money. And he starts sending this money in September. And by the end of January, 2023, uh, he's already sent her 10,000 USD, which is about a half million pesos, which is a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money. He told her already he's going to be there in March of 2023. So it's January. He's got February, March. He's got two months to wait before he gets there and to prepare everything to be there. He's anticipating his first Social Security check. Uh, he's anticipating selling his car, selling his furniture, selling his belongings. Now, he is not a rich man. He does not own a house. He's a renter. So he's just selling the stuff he has doesn't want to put anything in storage. He's going to come over here with a bag and a backpack, you know, carry on in a backpack. He's going to come here as a minimalist with as few belongings as possible. But he's sending her money all along. He's at, like I told you, he's at 10,000 USD. Now she's telling him, hey, we need a place to live. And if you remember the story I told you about myself and how I got scammed, check out this video, watch it, and then come back to this one if you hadn't seen this one before. She needs money to go get a place to live. She says, I need to get a place for us, us as a couple to be together, us as a couple that we have our own home. You don't want to live here with my parents in the province. You don't want to live, you know, like we live here. You need to live uh, a more comfortable lifestyle. And he's fully in, in agreement with this. And he sends her more money. He sends her $6,000 US over a course of another two months to find a place to live. And that's the first month's rent and the two month security deposit. Get it furnished uh, of things that it doesn't have. Get everything they need to have a comfortable lifestyle. 
and he's coming in March. He's just a month away, six weeks away. He's feeling comfortable about this. He is confident that everything is going right. Now, Grace, she's home alone. She has her uh, one daughter, which is uh, 16. And, you know, it's an older girl. So, you know, it doesn't need a lot of uh, attention every day. They go to school, uh, knows how to take care of herself. And Grace is excited uh, that John is coming to live. Well, just before March comes, John's not prepared yet. There's a few things he needs to do. He's figured, my God, I don't have enough money in the bank yet. He tells her, I can't come until June now. And, and she's like brokenhearted. She's already got the place to live. She's living there. Her daughter's moved in. And he's telling her, I have to wait to June. I'm not prepared. I need a few more months. Will you wait for me, Grace? And all along, he's sending her money all the time. He's paying some bank loans for her. Uh, he's paying some debts that she has. He bought her a scooter, um, you know, the furniture in the house, the down payment, on, uh, you know, the security deposit, and the first month's rent, uh, the deposit for the electric. He's been paying all this money out of pocket with the anticipation that he's coming there in March. Well, all plans go to crap. He can't come until at least June now. In March, April, May, June, you're looking at two, three more months. Well, Grace, she's brokenhearted. You know, she goes, are you ever going to come? You know, and he goes, yes, I'll be there in June. I'll be there in June. And that's June 2023. And he's still sending her 2,000 USD every month. So he sent the first 10 in the beginning, then another six. And now it's April and he's sending two in April, two in May, and two in June, you know, as, as time goes by. So that's 22,000 USD he sent this girl. Here comes June. And what's the first thing happens in June? She goes, when's your plane landing? What day are you going to be here? And he, you know, he's like brokenhearted because he has to tell her, I can't come until maybe September now. And this is costing him $2,000 every month to support this girl. And his date that he's going to get there keeps going farther and farther away. Now he's June and he's telling her, I can't get there until September. Well, as September slowly creeps up, you know, he's got another 2,000 he sends in July. And now he's into August. And in August, he sees on her Facebook, she does a little uh, short, Facebook short. And he sees that she's at a resort and she's, you know, having a good time at this resort. Well, you know, he's sending her so much money. She's already got the house going. Um, you know, 2000 USD is a good life for me or you living here in the Philippines, you know, and if you're a Filipina, it's gotta be a great life. And she's at the resort and he sees this guy in the resort with her. He doesn't at first put together that he's with her or that she's with him, he just sees her in the background. A few days later, there's a, a photo on Facebook. It's a posting and it's her, another girl and this guy. So, you know, he's not putting it two and two together yet, you know, and later there's another short and he's there and they're in the bar dancing and he's dancing with her. And uh, he starts putting this together that there's another guy there and it's a foreigner. Now this guy could have been a Filipino, could have been a foreigner, could have been any, anybody. But what it is, is she found somebody in person. So he confronts her. He says, what's going on here? You know, I've been sending you all this money. We've made all these plans. I'm coming to see you. And, and you're with somebody else in these shorts. Is that really somebody with you? Or is it just a coincidence? You know, he's hoping that you know, she's be honest with him, but he's hoping she says, I'm with nobody. He just happens to be there. That's my girlfriend's friend or something. No, she says, no, that's a guy I met. He's very nice. And he wants, he wants me to uh, live with him. And he goes, John tells Grace, how can that be? I pay for the rent uh, where you're living. I sent you money and, uh, you're going to let another man move in there? And she goes, well, he's going to pay the rent now because you're never coming. 
you're never coming. She goes, you said you're coming in January, and then you're gonna come in March, and then June, and now September. And yes, you send me money. Thank you so much for sending me money. But I need somebody in person. And nobody shows up. She's anticipating him coming and him coming and him coming and the date's getting pushed farther and farther and farther and farther away. Guys, when you tell a girl you're coming, make sure you have the plane ticket already. Don't give her false hopes. And don't give yourself false hopes by sending her money to get all situated for you and you're not in a position to come yet. If you have family members, family matters that you have to take care of, or you have family problems that need addressing, or you're not financially able to come yet, I'm gonna just add, I'm just gonna say, John probably was sending all the extra money he had when he should have been saving that money. If he hadn't already sent her about 22,000 USD, he would have had that in the bank already. He would have had at least, if he would have been normal in the amount of money you send somebody, he would have had 15, 17, 18,000 uh, USD in the bank to come to the Philippines. But no, he didn't. And this just goes to show you the girls. She did nothing wrong. She was waiting for him and waiting for him and waiting for him. And guys, leave me a comment about this. Do you agree with me that she didn't do nothing wrong? She did not make him hit the send button. You know, I preach this all the time. You're the one hitting the send button. You're the one telling the girl you're going to send money. You're the one telling the girl the plan of when you're going to be there. You're the one t giving her the month that you're going to be there. March of 2023, June of 2023, now September of 2023. How long can she wait? How long can she wait? Especially... It's not COVID anymore. People are here and they're meeting people. <clears throat> and you've made her life easy where she doesn't have to work. So she has plenty of free time and she's out with her friends. And then they meet some foreigners. And one of the guys take a liking to her and they start treating her nice. And she starts hanging out with them. She's lonely as like you are. And you've led her to believe you're going to be there any day now. So I don't find it to be her fault because she met you on TikTok. She could have met him through a dating site. She could have met him through Facebook. She could have met him through um, YouTube. She could have met him through many different avenues. And this can relate to anybody, but guys, I want it to relate to you. If you meet somebody online and you're going to come to the Philippines, you haven't been here before, you don't have plans to come here until you retire and you take care of all your affairs and you're just going to move here. You're not going to come for a trip with, you know, quote, boots on the ground to see what's going on, to meet somebody, meet that special someone. You're just waiting until you get your social security check, you get everything sold, and then you're coming. This could happen to you if things start going south. If as you prepare to leave, you know, you're preparing to retire. Maybe, you know, when your social security check kicks in, it's less money than you thought. Maybe you have some obligations, some bills you gotta take care of first before you move. Maybe you didn't get as much for your car as you thought you would get, or your furniture that you thought you could sell. Or your boss made you a hell of an offer to work another six months and you couldn't pass it up. So the girl is sitting there, she's waiting for you every day. She's talking to you every day after work. She's talking to you constantly. And you two are making plans. And John, he even bought her a ring. He had the ring. He showed her. He said, honey, this is the ring I bought you. This is the ring I'm going to give you. And we're going to get married as soon as I get there. And she's believing all this. She believes him. He's sending money. Why should she not believe him? He's doing everything he said he's going to do. Except show up. He's doing everything except the most important aspect of all this relationship stuff. Is he never shows up. And now you have a woman there who's in her 30s, uh, cute, friendly, and she meets somebody. And that somebody is there. That's a bird in the hand. He's right there for her to grab. You're the bird in the bush. And even if there's two of you, she's better off holding on to that bird she's got in her hand. And that's what happened in this case. 
I can't blame the girl for taking the money that he was sending her and using it. I do blame her once she decided to meet somebody. She should have said, John, I met somebody. I can't keep waiting for you. Either give me a date or I need to move on. And uh, that's the negative thing she did. She didn't tell him the truth that she met somebody and she wishes that he had a date set for her to, uh, a date set for him to come there and to be with her. Now, you know, he was so vague in the dates. He would be very firm three months out. I'm going to come there in January. And then January gets there and he says, no, I'll be there in March. And then March comes there and he goes, no, I'll be there in June. And then June comes and I can't make it until September. Well, you know, you're talking about nine, eight, nine, ten months where you're leading her on to think you're coming and then you're telling her, no, wait three more months. No, wait three more months. This isn't COVID where COVID held everybody back and you couldn't go. This is now. This is now. 2023, you can get on a plane, come to the Philippines. His biggest mistake was instead of sending all that money, he should have bought a plane ticket and come there and stay with her in the house that they got, get to know her, have a physical relationship, have her feel that you're totally committed by more than just money. Is she guilty? A little bit. Is he guilty? A little bit. He was lying to her, not intentionally. I, I think he had all the intentions of the world of coming in all those months when he said he was going to come. But because of situations, things beyond our control, he couldn't come. Could I hold her uh, responsible for this uh, collapse of a relationship? No, because she just kept waiting and waiting. And finally, there was a straw that broke the camel's back where she said, oh, no. You're not coming until September now. How long can she just tell her family? All oh, my friend, he's coming and we're going to get married in, in January. She's telling her family this. She's telling her friends all this. And, and nothing happens of it. Eventually it gets to the point, you know, when he hit June and said he wouldn't be there in September, Grace probably told her family and she probably got remarks from her family like, oh, he's never coming. He'll never be there. He'll never come and marry you. He's just talking to you, blah, blah, blah. You know, and money does not make everything correct. Money does not make two wrongs right. And he is so wrong in misleading her to think that he was coming to marry her. And at his advanced age, you know, he was 62, going on 63 now. You know, another year since when they first met to the day he was coming was over a year. And this is after COVID. And I was fully guilty of almost the same situation. I know exactly how he feels. He feels betrayed. He feels lied to. He feels used. He feels like nothing is going right in his life right now. He cannot make the right decision. Every time he decides on something, I'm going to buy that plane ticket in September. I'm going to go there in, in June. Whatever month he was going to come. Everything fell apart the closer the date came. Maybe he was scared to go. Maybe it's a mental thing on his part that he cannot go. He just can't leave. He's too scared. He enjoys the comfort and the stability of the life he has here. He has dreams, the fantasy dreams of being in the Philippines, but he can't make that commitment. But he sent money. And we don't know his total financial situation. You know, some people, 2,000 bucks a month is nothing. You know, to other people, it's their life savings. So we don't know where he was in this ball game. I'm going to guess he's closer to having plenty of money than not having enough. But he never had enough saved to make the move, he said. Maybe he had a good paying job, but he was unable to save any money. We will never know the real truth of the matter. I honestly believe he was too scared to make that move. He wanted to make the move. He liked having that online girlfriend. He liked having that girl he could talk to. He liked the idea of getting married to a beautiful woman in the Philippines, living in an exotic country, having an exciting life. But he just couldn't pull the trigger. And you can't blame the girl. 
She's out there preparing the house for him, getting everything ready for him, believing the words that he says to her. He, he, she's believing everything he says. And she's like a sponge absorbing it all. Yes, what kind of couch do you want? How big a TV should we have? Do you want internet? You know, what do you want? You know, everything he wanted, she bought. He sent her plenty of money. She had no worries. But what she didn't have was someone laying in her bed with her, someone to keep her company at night, someone to keep her company during the day. You know, even if you have a child, an older child, uh, when you're alone, when you're single, you don't have a partner, the days are pretty easy. You can get up and go to work. Women can get up and take care of the house and do things. But it's the nighttime when you get lonely. You know, the evening comes, the sun's setting, uh, your day is over. That's when you get lonely. And in this case, I think she finally got lonely, finally had enough of the, oh, when are you coming? And the date getting pushed away, being excited about his arrival, preparing for his arrival, and then being told, no, it's three more months away, it's three more months away, it's three more months away. So guys, I want you to leave me a comment. Should she return the money? And here's what he's asking out of her. Now that you have a foreigner, that you're seeing and you're gonna break up with me. This is John telling Grace. If you're gonna break up with me, I want my money back. I want you to pay me back all the money I sent you. Well, good luck with that, John. Good luck with that. Why would she send it back to you? She spent it already. She might have a couple thousand uh, tucked away that she, she could send you to make you happy. Do you think the guy she's dating now is gonna pay you back? Is that what you want? And are you calling her a scammer now because of what happened? You know, you were a willing participant during this whole matter, John. You sent her money. You made the plans. You told her you wanted to marry her. You told her you just got a ring for her. You told her you'll be there in January. You told her you'd be there in March. You're the one every month sending her money, sending her money, hitting the send button. You're the one that sent the $6,000 uh, for her to get a place to live for the two of you. And here you are doing this stuff, you know, watching YouTubers. Because you, you're talking, you're telling me the story. Because I'm a YouTuber. I don't know who else you've told the story to. But John, you're the one hitting send. You are responsible. I don't consider it a scam. I just consider it a mistake you made. And if you found somebody that you really like and you want to, lock her down as your girlfriend, get on that airplane and come here to the Philippines, put a ring on her finger, get married to her, um, they have a physical relationship, do something to show her that you're for real and sit there and talk about the plans. Show the family that you're real. Don't let the family think that you're just a, a ghost out there who is helping out. Become a real person. She was anticipating being with you for the rest of her life. You were the guy that was coming with from the West. You had an income, you had a pension. Uh, you were gonna take good care of her and you have so far since you met her. But you, you're not there physically. You have to be there physically. Money does not solve every problem in the world. It solves a lot of the problems in the world. But at some point, you gotta have that physical relationship. At some point you have to meet, at some point, you have to be able to hold each other and say, we're in a committed relationship. And just talking online or video chatting, um, after a while, it's gonna get old. And like I said, I made this mistake. I made this mistake for a lot of money. And was I scammed? I don't think so. I think I was super foolish. Uh, at the end, she had a boyfriend and uh, got pregnant. But same thing could happen in this story. At the end, she found a foreigner. Grace found a foreigner to be with, and she wanted him to live with her. She wanted to have a companion, a live-in companion, just like I do here in the Philippines. I did not want to have a part-time girlfriend. I wanted to have a full-time girlfriend, somebody I could have a relationship with, somebody who is there every night for me, every morning, all the time. Maybe I'm needy, maybe Grace is needy, but John, don't do anything foolish. You know, John has told me, 
Oh, I want to go public with this. I want everybody to know that she's a scammer. She scammed me. Well, she didn't scam you, buddy. Why, why contact her family? Why contact her friends? Why, why go on Facebook and, and just send messages to everybody on her friends page? It doesn't make sense. You were foolish and you lied to her. You told her you were coming, but you never came. Absence makes the heart fonder for somebody else. A bird in the hand. That's what she has now. She found her, her foreigner there in the Philippines that wants to be with her, that loves her and wants to take care of her. She has that bird in the hand now. John, you were just a bird in the bush. A big bird, but just a bird in the bush. So guys, don't overcommit to these girls. Don't overcommit to somebody uh, and you're not going to come there. Don't overcommit financially. Don't overcommit emotionally. You know, if you have plenty of money to send a girl, you have plenty of money to get on an airplane. And, and quit telling me, oh, I can't take a month to come to the Philippines. Even if you come for a week, come here and meet her. You're not coming for a vacation. You're coming to meet the girl that you want to be with during your whole retirement for the rest of your life. So get on that plane and come and meet that girl. Don't overcommit just financially. That's, that's a losing proposition because financially, the money disappears. Every time you send it, the money just goes away and goes away and goes away, gets spent on something. You have nothing. You've been better off making less promises, saving more money, and you probably could have got, gotten there in, in March uh, instead of now all the way in September. And there's no guarantee you would have gone there in September. Guys, leave me a comment about this. Has this happened to you? What do you think about John? Other than being foolish. I think he was in love with this girl, but he had a fantasy and the money was feeding his fantasy. I don't think uh, it's the wrong head talking. He, he had this fantasy about living in the Philippines with this beautiful woman. You know, when, when you're in your 60s, you, you think, will I ever be with a beautiful woman again? And then boom, there it is. She's talking to you online. She's video chatting you and she's gorgeous. She's, she's drop dead gorgeous. And that's even a six, seven, eight, nine, or a 10. Compared to the other girls that we could date when we're in our 60s, she was gorgeous. I saw pictures of her. She's a very beautiful lady. But I don't know her story. But I heard his story. And his story is one of just putting the truth off, putting uh, the future in doubt by keep postponing his arrival to the Philippines. I don't think you can date someone online for over a year, send them $22,000 USD in the course of 13 months and say to yourself, I'm not coming yet. You have to make that plain. Don't tell her you're coming until you buy the ticket. Don't tell her you're coming until you have everything lined up because things change, shit happens. Leave me a comment, guys. Let me know what you think.